this is the tool that we use and it's just, it's a melon baller is all it is. But it's a very small melon baller. This uh, is a, a 10 millimeter um, one and they're kind of hard to come by. We, we did a lot of searching to find these. You can't use just the regular size melon ball because you're going to get too big of a core. So it's important to use only this size. Um, you, can, you can purchase them, but like I said, they're a little bit difficult. So what we did was we got on the internet and we ordered a whole bunch of them. And so if you can't find them, please come into the office and we'll, we'll uh, hook you up with a melon baller. And then all you do is you find the, the stem end of the potato or the stolen attachment end. Sometimes it's pretty obvious because you can kind of see uh, where the stem was attached. But if you have trouble, you can always look for the eyes of the potato. And over the top of the eyes, there's going to be kind of a little arch. And that arch is always going to point towards the stem end. So you find the stem end. And I'm just going to scoop okay. out a little ball. And that's all the bigger that it needs to be. And you do not have to sterilize your tool in between potatoes, but you do want to sterilize it in between lots. So if you're doing more than one uh, lot, you should sterilize in between. When the core samples arrive in the lab, the first thing that we do is we put them into plastic cups like this. And we cover them with water, and then we put them on this shaker table. And this just agitates the sample for you know, overnight, you know, 16, 18 hours, something like that. And it helps draw the bacteria out of the cores and into the water. So when we run the test, what we're actually testing is the water that these cores have been soaking in overnight. Okay, so this is the actual PCR machine. Um, it's called a thermal cycler. And the reason it's called a thermal cycler is because it changes temperatures in kind of a cyclical manner. So to run a reaction, we actually uh, put small amounts of the sample in a, in a 96 well plate. Looks like this. I don't know if you can see how tiny those little wells are, but it only takes a very small amount of sample. So we add the sample to the plate and we also add all the other reaction bits. There's enzymes and um, all kinds of, you know, things that need to go into this reaction. But it, each little uh, tube here acts like an individual test tube. So this plate could actually run 96 tests. In reality, um, it doesn't turn out to be that many. We have to put some controls in every plate, a negative and a positive control. And um, we test everything in duplicate, so um, we can't actually run 96 samples in here, but that's how many reactions we can run. Um, this part here is the part that actually changes temperature during the, during the cycle, and so the plate just fits right on top of there. This part is the optical reader, and all these little holes there have, an L have LED lights in them, and it's the LED lights that um, excite the fluorescent molecules that are in the reaction here. And so what the reader reads is how much fluorescence is in each well. Um, the, to uh, run the test itself is really pretty simple. It's just a matter of pushing some buttons because I've got all my protocols already uh, programmed into the machine. I just choose the one that I want and I hit run and it does its thing.